Group management is a huge part of the work that we do as outdoor activity instructors. In this video, I'm gonna share with you five ideas that help with group management and will hopefully make your life a bit easier too. Enjoy. This video is all about sharing some ideas on group management. Now, some of them may sound a little bit obvious, but it can be quite easy to overlook a lot of these, especially when you've got lots going on around you. Hi, my name's Niall. I've been an outdoor instructor for over a decade now, and welcome to Instructor 101. If this is your first time here on the channel, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out on future content. So let's get started on those five tips. Number one, have a clear way of getting the group's attention, because if you don't have their attention, then how are they gonna know what to do? There are loads of ways of getting people's attention. You could do a shout out, you could do a countdown, give them some sort of signal. You can even just call over to them. But what I would say is don't shout at them. So let me expand a little bit on shouting. So there's a difference between shouting over to a group and say, hey guys, can you come over here please? And there's a difference between, right, you lot, I need you all the way over here right now. So there's a difference there because and one, you're being calm and collected. You're just raising your voice to make sure that you're heard. The other is losing control of your emotions. And if you're losing control of your emotions, then it's gonna be hard to control a group. So whichever way that you choose to get a group's attention, first of all, make sure that you're consistent. If something doesn't work just once, then give it a few more goes before you decide to move on to something else if you think that's appropriate. That way you're not confusing the group and they can get used to your particular style and know how to react. The other thing that I would suggest is once you've got everyone's attention, then make sure you're firm with that. So by that, I mean, if there are a few people still talking, then wait for them. There's no point in getting everyone's attention unless you've got every single person's attention. The other side of that is if some people in the group think that it's okay for them to interrupt you, then others are gonna notice that and they'll think that, you know what, in the future, that's acceptable. Don't let it be acceptable. Make sure you've got everyone's group and if that means waiting for a little bit or maybe just even addressing it in an appropriate way, then do that. Tip number two, give clear rules and expectations. If the group doesn't know what they need to do, then how are they gonna do that? It's just gonna to lead to confusion and disruption. The best advice that I can give with delivering these rules and expectations is to do it sooner rather than later. That and keeping it as simple as possible. If a group knows what the rules are and the boundaries are before the start of an activity, then they're less likely to break those rules by accident later on. So they would have to make that decision if they've not got confused for whatever reason. So this goes for adults as well. So when I've been on mountainous walks with groups of adults, I'll need to remind them, and as daft as it sounds, not to litter. Because sometimes we've got this belief that uh, certain foods will rot and biodegrade, which they do, but the bacteria that's needed to break down a banana is only gonna be really found in climates where they grow bananas. So if you leave a banana skin down by the side of the road, on on the way up to Snowdon, it's gonna take a long time for that to break down. So pack it up and take it home. But the point is, if I put that expectation in place right from the off, it means that I don't necessarily have to address it later on. And otherwise it kind of gets a little bit awkward. Keeping the instructions as simple as possible makes the world of difference too. So I don't know about you, but I struggle to remember three pieces of information at a time. So what I'll often do with groups, I'll just give one instruction at a time. And for example, if I choose an archery session, I said, right team, we're about to go into archery. All I need to do as soon as we go in is just take a seat on the benches. That's the one instruction. We'll go inside, we'll take a seat on the benches. And then I'll explain, great, we're now sat down on the benches. Right, there's a few things that I'm gonna cover. First of all, the boundaries. So I'll have drip fed that information. Now, by keeping it simple, it's made it easier for that information to be processed and drip feeding that info as we go through. Plus that's really important, especially when a group is taking in lots of new surroundings or there's other stuff going on around them which they're not used to. So they're trying to process all that information as well as those instructions. So yeah, keep it simple. Tip number three, explain why. 
The thing about rules is that they can be broken and they're more likely to be broken if people do not see the point in following them. Sometimes taking the time to explain why you're doing something will make the instruction more memorable, but will also give a lot more understanding and make them more likely to follow that instruction. So at one of the places that I work at, we kick the group out with buoyancy aids. Invariably, what will happen is we'll put the buoyancy aids on, and so all of the group has these big giant padded bits over their, their chest, and what they automatically do is they start beating their chest and pretending that they're King Kong. Now, that'll always happen, apart from if you explain that there's a rule, and it's even more likely to stop if you explain the reason why. So if you explain to, whether it's a group of kids that there's lots of foam inside and lots of bubbles, if you pop all the bubbles, then it's not gonna help you float as much, then they're more likely to follow that instruction. When dishing out helmets, there's always normally like one kid that's always like chewing their, their helmet strap, well, if you quickly explain to them that a lot of other people have worn that before and potentially even chewed on that particular bit of strap as well, then they normally spit it out. Unless they don't, and that's just a bit weird. Tip number four. Think about the environment that you're in and can you reduce any of the distractions around you? So if you're working in a classroom, you'd think about how everything was set up beforehand, whether that's just the, the tables laid out or chairs split up in a certain way. Uh, would you make sure that the area is clear and tidy so there's less stuff to fiddle with? Well, that would apply in a classroom environment, so why shouldn't it apply for the work that we do? So are there things going on in the background? There could be like a zip wire going on in the background, at which case, maybe do you want to consider thinking about moving to somewhere else where that action isn't happening so you can do at least your intro talk to a session somewhere else. Is all the equipment in the right place for you so you can make it really quick and easy to grab the bits that you need when you need it and bring them out to the group. And also think about when you're going to introduce that equipment. So if I was to do a nightline or a sensory trail where you blindfold a group and take them on like an obstacle course, if I was to do that I'm going to do my introduction and all those little bits that they might consider, maybe a few games first, before handing out the blindfolds. Because once they're given those blindfolds, then they're normally looking at them, playing around with the toys or whatever they've got in their hand, instead of focusing their attention on you and what you're saying. And also think about where the sun is as well. If the sun is in everyone else's eyes, then move to a position where they can see you so they're not squinting at you and just looking confused and dazed. In fact, if you need to, spin around so that the sun is in your eyes and not the group's. At least they'll still be able to concentrate, although maybe they'll be looking at why you're squinting, but it's the better alternative and it keeps the group focused. Tip number five. This last tip is probably the most valuable tip out of all the ones that I've covered so far, and that is to build a positive relationship with those that you are working with. Now, I know a few people might be wondering what's that got to do with group management, but it has lots of value to like lots of different things, but within the context of group management stuff, a group is more likely to help you out and follow your instructions if they like you. Sounds really obvious, so if you get to know the group a little bit and win them over, then that's the battle already won. You've done it, and then they are more likely to follow the instructions that you give. Taking the time to get to know individuals in your group will make them feel valued. So take the time to find out what their interests are, what they like to get up to when they're not doing ridiculous high adrenaline activities. Um, keep using their name as well. That's gonna make a massive difference and makes them be seen as an individual, not just a, another face as part of a crowd. If you can do this, it will make a world of difference to them but also to the way that you manage your group. It might even inspire you to think about how you can adapt your sessions. That way you can think about, oh, this person likes particular sport, uh, say football, then maybe you can introduce football as a kind of mini game during canoeing or some other activity. Have a little bit of think about that and it will engage that group even more and make it even easier for you to manage that group. Now, there are loads of other ideas out there for group management. This is just a few that I've happened to have chosen for this video, and I'll make sure to choose a few more for the next one. So which of these five tips have you found the most useful? 
And also, is there any other group management tips or strategies that you would put in place? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and also hit the bell and subscribe icon so that you don't miss out on future content. In the meantime, make sure to check out my other useful videos for outdoor activity instructors and feel free to head on over to Facebook and Instagram for other great resources. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take care.